Center for the Ethiopian Educational Information and Communication Technology presents Educational Satellite Television Programs. Hello teacher, hello students. Welcome to today's lesson on rule of law and management of conflicts. Last time we learned about judicial protection of the rights of individuals. We focused on two elements of due process of law. I am sure you can recall our discussion of habeas corpus and presumption of innocence. In this lesson, we will continue to learn about several elements of due process of law. These include fair notice, impartial tribunal, speedy and public trials, right to counsel, right against self-incrimination, protection against double jeopardy, and rights of appeal. That is a long list. Let us get started. Students, before we begin to discuss the different elements of due process of law, let us take a moment to recall what due process of law means. Please write down a definition of this term, and when you are finished, share your answer with a partner. Students, let's get ready. Begin. Time's up! 
Let's get back to our lesson. Thank you for your participation, students. Due process of law means that legal proceedings are conducted according to established rules and principles for the protection and enforcement of private rights. Two elements of due process of law that we have already discussed are habeas corpus and presumption of innocence. Habeas corpus is a legal remedy against unlawful detention. Presumption of innocence means that the accused is assumed to be innocent until the courts find him or her guilty by a fair and objective process. Let us now turn our attention to some of the other elements of due process of law. We will begin with fair notice. This deals with the summons that must be written in a language that the defendant or accused can understand. It must contain the time and place at which the defendant must present himself or herself. Impartial tribunal refers to the necessity for the court to be impartial and nonpartisan in its dealings with a case. Students, what would be the results if a court were not impartial and nonpartisan? Students, let's get ready. <laughs> Begin. Time's up! Let's get back to our lesson. Welcome back. If a court was not impartial and nonpartisan, justice would not be carried out in a fair way. A court that is biased will base its judgments on its own opinion rather than on the process of the taking of evidence, cross-examination, and so on. This would lead to a prejudiced justice system. 
which would constitute a violation of the Constitution and rule of law. The FDRE Constitution ensures that courts and tribunals are accessible to all defendants regardless of their race, religion, sex, and property. At every state of a trial, judges are required to treat defendants equally. Due process of law also provides for speedy and public trials. This means that an accused person has the right to a quick public trial. The exceptions to this involve cases that are related to national security or public safety. Sometimes a trial is delayed to protect the privacy of the accused. Students, what other element of due process of law is related to speedy and public trials? Students, let's get ready. Begin. Time's up! Let's get back to our lesson. Good work, students. I am sure you were able to answer this question easily. Speedy and public trials are related to habeas corpus. Habeas corpus is a remedy that ensures that accused persons are not held illegally or for longer than 48 hours without trial. Speedy and public trials also ensure that the justice system works in a timely fashion so that no one is detained longer than necessary. Due process of law ensures that accused persons have the right to counsel. This is the right to be represented by legal counsel. The legal counsel can be provided either by the defendant or by the state. The purpose of legal counsel is to assist the defendant who probably does not have enough legal knowledge to establish a strong defense. Defendants also have the right to be protected against self-incrimination. Students, the word incriminate means to make someone appear guilty of a crime or wrongdoing. The justice system protects defendants by permitting them to remain silent. The court must make it clear to defendants that anything they may say could be used as evidence against them. In addition, protection against self-incrimination shields a person from being compelled 
to make a confession or an admission which can then be used as evidence against them. People are also protected against double jeopardy. This means that a person cannot be charged or convicted again for an offense that has been tried and acquitted or convicted in the past. The final element of due process of law that we will discuss is the right of appeal. This means that after a decision has been made by the court, the accused is entitled to appeal for a review of the judgment. Students, let us complete this lesson with an activity. Suppose that you are falsely accused of perpetrating severe damage against public property. What are your rights? Students, let's get ready. <laughs> Begin. Time's up! Let's get back to our lesson. Welcome back. According to habeas corpus, you have the right to be charged within 48 hours. You also have the right to be presumed innocent until proven guilty. You are protected from being forced 
or coerced to make a confession. You have the right to seek legal counsel and you are also permitted to cross-examine witnesses or provide evidence in your defense. The justice system has many elements in place to protect you from unjust accusations and imprisonment. Students, this is the end of our lesson on judicial protection of the rights of citizens. Next time, we will learn about rule of law and governments. Until then, thank you teacher, thank you students.